Hello everyone, welcome back to our show, Let's Talk Bible. And today we have our guests from Turkey, Jonathan Weenie Francis, Hello. Hello. and from Cyprus, we have Tommy. And we're Hello. just going to continue on our topic on Christian journey. Last week was very entertaining, but we're not done. And... We talked about, is the church supposed to be entertaining? Is it supposed to be fun? And also doctrine, you know, Mm -hmm. like when a Christian is born again and he's, he just became born again, you know, he's just learning what is right. You know, how does he know the right doctrine to follow? So without further ado, we're just going to move on to our first question of the week. Um, There is a really big challenge that faces uh, unbelievers who want to give their lives to Christ, but don't don't also want to because of this challenge. And this challenge is the judging nature of us Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, like when someone uh, becomes born again, they are still babies and they don't know, they wouldn't be able to know that, okay, this and this is not acceptable in church. And then they would probably get into the church and these people are just looking at them like, hmm, imagine, look at what that sister is wearing. Look at the amount of makeup on her face, you know? So my question is that how, as, how do we as Christians try to make the new converts and unbelievers see that we are accommodating and we are going to be able to, you know, caution them without repelling them I don't know if you get what I mean. I, 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 I get it. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, correct them without actually... Um, repelling, like making them I mean, yeah. you know, run away or be like, oh, you're harsh and you're judging. Okay. You know? So, so how, politely. Uh, politely okay. telling them, I, but not on okay. a place of judgment. Okay. I, I think that that is where I... One day I was talking to somebody and I said, I believe customer service should be in the church, not as in church members as well, but usher, um, people who lead, mm-hmm. and especially for pastors, because what is then customer service? You see, so if you have been in business before, you've handled customers before, you've handled people, clients before, it gives you a certain foundation, naturally. Yeah. The same church member that maybe you helped in a way, as in helping them to understand the word of God. You mm-hmm. did everything possible, even to see they are good. I mean, the good things in them, in spite of the negative things around them, they are the same people that when you step on their toes, the way they will handle you. Okay, but that is who a client is, mm-hmm. and that is who a customer is. So that is where I I will I will just submit that. Churches should have that training for their leaders. And then, if possible, one of the Sundays, it won't be a bad idea that even how Jesus went about talking to people, and some of them could not even feel so bad about themselves because he used wise words to address their issues. And then they didn't feel that that's harsh. I mean, they didn't feel that Jesus was being harsh on them. And then they feel welcome. So I think it's, it's a knowledge that we need to learn. It's, it's something that you can't just receive the impartation by the Holy Spirit. It's something that we have to train ourselves and then train our minds to do. Until that, we, we, may, we may handle things anyhow. Yes. Would anyone want to add to that? About yeah. That? Yes. yes Actually, when Jonathan was saying, I was just thinking about something. Yes, we need like education on how to manage people 
But sometimes the baby Christians are too complacent. Like, yes, we know you're a baby Christian. Yes, but even for kids, you know, you know this child knows this thing is wrong, but it will still go and take their thing. And sometimes they have to hit their hands and say, stop it. But if it's always, don't take it on, they will still keep going. So sometimes there has to be some, Heart I don't know. Thing. Yes, like some harshness. A little, a in, little in bit little. of it. Yeah. yeah. So they don't get too complacent that, yes, Otherwise, they'll, you keep telling them, you know, these people are just new and you have to take care of them. In their minds, that thing is entering. Like, I'm new, you know, I'm, I'm new. And they have to take care of me. No, no. Like, but you know, but you know that um, this Christian is not a, a literal child, right? He's an adult that's had a specific way of living in the world, Great. right? Mm-hmm. And now he has um, come into Christ. And if, if you, if they exhibit certain characters and instead of us trying to correct them in love, we are like, you know, being harsh about it and everything. Don't you think it might lead that person to go back to how they were? Because they would be like, oh, when I was in the world, I didn't have a problem with this. You know, it was easy. Now I am in Christ. I'm not being paid. And yet, this person sees it fit to talk to me this certain way. No, no, no. no, no. This, this, this is what I was saying. Every time, there has to be a balance. A balance, yeah. And there has That's to be a balance. From. Yeah. Okay, Francis. I think that. I think this yeah. this is where discipleship is very important because you see, exactly. when we come into the church, not everybody is also a matured Christian. So. Yeah. Young people, our people who even call themselves mature mm-hmm. Christians can know the word of God very well, but probably doesn't know how to treat people. And you can't take all of us who go to church to Bible school. Some of people will still be stubborn and still react to the way they react. So this is yeah. where I believe discipleship is a very important thing. When you pick someone, so I'm a baby Christian, I come to the church of Pentecost, um, Cyprus. Then we say, um, uh, Winifred is mature, based what we've been seeing. Then Winifred, coach this person, guide her. So when Winifred is guiding that particular person, if she goes to church and somebody treats her rudely or speaks to her rudely or judge her rudely, Winifred can do the damage control and say, no, 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 people are in the church. They don't even know everything. Otherwise, when we leave everything to the church members, we, we are all under a group yeah. where people will talk to, mm-hmm. to young mm-hmm. believers anyhow based on how they feel. Mm-hmm. So I think this disciple is very important yes. in that way. We I find agree. people who are very, very, very matured and then they disciple them one-on-one. Because if you leave it to the church, people will talk the way they I, want I have to a based on how they I have a question to that effect. Their, their, I have a question their. to that effect. Yes. Yeah, so... Um, like what um, Bia was saying, it's very good, but I've seen people that have been discipled by some matured believers, and they have they ended up picking up, excuse me to say, some of the nasty behaviors that they had. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, it's like yes, maybe we ask brother so so and so to follow up on a particular. Um, newly born, mm-hmm. I mean, Christian or someone, and they ended up with the newborns picking up certain traits that the mentor had, okay, or that person who was discipling mm-hmm. had. And it has always been a, a challenge. Yes. So okay. I agree with what you call, I agree with what Francis is saying that the damage control, mm-hmm. but sometimes. The, the one doing the damage control himself is causing more damage. Mm. Well, that's why I said that's why I said we need a matured Christian. If somebody has a problem, he's not matured. What, what's the description for I, mature? I don't agree with that because we're still Christians. The only man who has walked the face of the earth without sin is the Holy, Christ. It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we have the Holy Spirit, but we are still in progress of trying to be like Christ. Okay. Do you understand? So not you can, there is no perfect human being on the yes. face of the earth right now. Even our uh, top pastors, our leaders, they still have some little, you know, things that are not, that they're trying to even, you know, get rid of, you know? Yeah. So as a baby Christian, I feel that person shouldn't be there thick of the bad things. No, let's not even talk about it on a Christian level. Like if you have a mentor, are you not supposed to only learn the good things that this mentor has in this area, maybe in 
design, see, you know. We, we, I mean, what Jonathan is coming from, I understand, and where you're coming from, it's, I understand. It's, it's not just because like that. Because it's not, it's not that you have, because now we have, we have how will a baby know putting his hands in a fire is a wrong thing or not? So yeah. if you follow or shouldn't follow. So with what yeah. Jonathan is trying to say is that sometimes um, we mm -hmm. give someone yeah. to mentor and the person will mentor and even yeah. teach bad things right. in, in a way. So what I'm saying is that the person is not there to be your only one teacher. Not that's not what okay. I'm asking. So that okay. that's the only one to tell. You only go to him for an advice or anything. But okay. I'm just saying one on one damage control. As in, when you go to church, sometimes you go to church. Pastor preach about something. Sometimes it's confusing. Maybe pastor addresses something and then it's confusing. Sometimes speak to one or two people other than rather than getting the whole feedback from the church. And this is just in connection with um, um, the way people are treated or the judgment in, is yeah. is purely for that judgment part. But sometimes there are a lot of people in the church. Even even if we go to church, we know there are yeah. issues in the church. There's one person, person who is not okay with someone, and the whole church is in division and all those yeah. things that goes on. And, and that tells us that the church we are not perfect because of the people in there. The, the, the body of Christ is perfect, but the congregation of people who follow mm -hmm. Him are not. So if that is the case, we are not perfect people. Um, yeah. But when somebody comes to church and then everybody in the church is saying, ah, oh, I don't like the way you address. You know, somebody has to address that to the person and make the person yeah, sure. understand that, no, the person are judging you or they are judging you based on the way they are dressed. But in God's way, this is what the understanding is. Let me use my own self as an example. There was a friend that I had in university and then she wasn't a believer. And then I used to tell her about Jesus. I was so stunned. Like, I, was, I mean, I was immature, immature also. So I only knew the, the good things. Do this, don't do that. Like the laws, mm -hmm. I was very good, perfect with that. Ah, you don't do this, you don't do that, you don't do this. But when you are um, ministering to someone like that, and then you over, um, I mean, I guess uh, always telling them about the bad things. Ah, you, did, you, you went to the club. Why did you go? You know, it's not good to go to the club. Then you're pushing the person away. He's put, the person will feel uncomfortable to even exactly. talk to you. Because exactly. he knows that, the moment you talk to you, you are going to push her away. And yeah. people want to feel comfortable in the way they are. So you can't just go and sell your Jesus the way you think it has to be sold and force yeah. somebody to buy it. It's, it's, no. it's, a, it's a part of understanding the person, giving them the word of God one at a time, one at a time. I'll make another example, last one, and I'll let other person speak. When you're trying to correct two people, and then one is good, one is not very good. And you're always telling her, Johnny, Johnny is the perfect one and maybe Maya is not. So if you say, mm. Maya, look at Johnny. Johnny is doing so well. Why can't you just follow Johnny? You push him yeah. Maya away. Yeah. But if you look at the good things in Maya and say, yeah, Maya, you made a good step. At least you came to church. You did well. Um, your prayer life will grow. And, um, and uh, little by little you grow. Then you are encouraging Maya to mm -hmm. stay. But if you are comparing Maya, who is one year old big Christian, mm -hmm. to um, um, Johnny, who has been in the church for five years mm -hmm. or was born in the mm -hmm. church, maybe they are the same age. Then you are pushing my away. Okay, exactly. So that's a skill that we have to teach. And if the church, the whole body can't know, you have to find someone who can direct such people yeah. their path. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so basically, when a Christian, when young Christians do something that is not, you know, in line with the scripture, they're saying that we have and I to know to... when to encourage and we have to know when to yeah. caution i want to kind of i want to answer. add to what you um, just said okay tell me i want to add to what you just said um first of all you have to encourage a baby christian a baby christian needs encouragement a baby christian needs encouragement you need to encourage them after encouraging them you you will be able to change a lot of things in them Okay. Also, the most important thing, you should always stand for the baby Christian to pray for them. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. To always pray for them because I, they say, there's this saying that you can take the horse to the stream, but you cannot force the horse to drink. And mm -hmm. you see changes. It is God who changes people, not mm -hmm. you and I. We can try. I can give you the advices i can give you the correction but it is god who changes the uh, uh, um the the person by his own power you understand so you should always pray mm -hmm. for them encourage them 
motivate mm. them and pray for them. This is just what I wanted Thank to Thank you, add. Pastor Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have anything to say on that? I have something to say. Like okay, really. said, uh, Francis and Tommy, I think looking at what we just said, that means that there has to be a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, yes. work so that we can accommodate like the uh, newborn babies, yeah. baby Christians, like new yes. converts. Otherwise, yes. it will be a mess. Yes. Yeah. So from what Francis said, really? I just Okay. No, no, no you finish. It. You finish. Yeah. You finish. So I was thinking, you know, this I, I think I listened to one preaching from one man of God. He said, before you can actually put a chalk on the blackboard, you need to accept that this is a blackboard. So the blackboard is like the person sins. You make the person act like talk. feel that yes, I know this is who you are. Let the person feel comfortable with that before you can start writing things on it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So we need to be really careful. Like customer service from Jonathan. It's really needed. It's it's a, it's a fellowship with people. We need to have people's skills. Yes. How do you talk to yes. people? We need to learn all that. You know, people bring this cultural thing. It's this is how my daddy brought me. Class. When, my, when my daddy talks to me, he yells at me and he I get things done. So I'm also going to yell at you. I don't care if you're a baby Christian or not. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you are really called by God, you have to stay in it. No, it doesn't work like that. They'll, they'll go. If you can't stay, go. When we to what you are saying, a, a baby, you said a baby Christian, changing a baby Christian takes a lot of work. Now let's use Nengi as a case study. We were here Why the last am I time. being used? <laughs> <laughs> I have no choice. No. Okay, let's hear it. <laughs> let's use her uh, as a case mm-hmm. study for reference purposes, mm-hmm. okay? We were, at, we were here the last time when she was talking about uh, I think a god daughter, a godmother's children, right? You're mm-hmm. living with them in the house. Is that yeah. if, I'm, if I'm right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So you see the, the work she puts in day and night <laughs> to live with those kids, yeah. to take care of them, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Is it is it easy for you, Nengi? No. Not that. It's really difficult. Fine. So yeah. now to you, to you, uh, uh, Winnie, a baby Christian is a baby Christian. They are naive. They don't know anything. So it takes a lot Perfect. of work mm-hmm. to nurture them yeah. in the word of God, to nurture them about the things of Christ. It takes, and that's why we have pastors, we have leaders, deacons in the church. These are the uh, uh, people who are responsible for nurturing baby mm. Christians. That's it. Um, this, um, uh, should I say, explanation that Tommy gave just uh, brought something to my mind. So using the kids as as an example, yes, right? Yes. <laughs> so uh, you realize how lots of times they can be very annoying or you know, stressful to handle. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that I have to, you know, be harsh on them because of the the attitude they are exhibiting. Yeah. You know, I can I am allowed to get upset. But from me being upset, I don't have to take it out on them. Yeah. So when I get upset with them, I just, you know, breathe and calm down and talk and say, okay, this, this, don't do that, okay? And try to explain to them in the best way possible why they shouldn't do what they are doing that is annoying me. Mm, do you understand? Yeah. So I said that to say this. Um, lots of times in discipleship, like Francis said, sometimes the baby Christians can do something that will appall you maybe something that you've told them times without number that this thing is wrong Mm -hmm. and it shouldn't be done but they're still doing it and you see them doing it i feel we shouldn't go from that place of anger and start judging them like why did you do this so you you still went to club again eh after what i've been telling you (laughs) no you take a, a minute to breathe calm down and then talk to the person about it that we're trying to make progress you know, so this and this should be done and you should still try to avoid this and this. Mm. It wouldn't, the person just gave their life to Christ. So they're just going to boom, stop doing all those things they used to yeah. do. Mm. You know, it's a gradual process. And so, also, lastly, these people, not like they don't know what they are doing is wrong. They know. So they all do. the things are telling them, they know. So they know. <laughs> talking, talking too much doesn't solve because they know. Everybody who's a Christian and knows the law, even if a baby yeah. Christian, even some things you know is wrong before you even yeah. accept yeah. Christ. Yes, you, you know that and, some and, things are not good. And, and so, I think that um, 
one other thing will be this is where in the case of the discipleship the lifestyle here will do a lot of work rather than just the talking yes. because the the we always copy what we see and we forget about the things we listen to mm -hmm. the things that we see they are the very things that we are always moved to copy i mean always moved to to do and so this is where we have to be very disciplined like paul said that i subject myself my flesh to to the word of god that i have preached to others the first i think first corinthians 9 27 he says that i subject myself to the word of god so that after i have preached to mm -hmm. others i do not become a castaway mm -hmm. other than that you end up leading many That's to true. find greener pastures and then at the end of the day you yourself you are not able to make it so in a way of protecting yeah. the one you are discipling and yourself then you need to strike a balance where you make your a law to yourself and you make sure whatever you are telling others to do it is exactly what you are also doing, doing. right like 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 leading a prayer and telling you know you lay whatever thing they have to pray about they start praying mm -hmm. And you, the person leading, is like, pray, 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 pray. pray. What are you doing? And the leader is not pray, 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 pray. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> great. That's a great example. That's a great example. Yeah. 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 No, he, he's giving morale. <laughs> <laughs> that was giving morale. Like, pray, pray. Practice. <laughs> Oh, sometimes it's needed. You need someone who's, who's gonna encourage. Yeah. Away okay. Then... So also our last question for this uh, series, um, mm -hmm. it's about our freedom in Christ. As a young Christian, you know, yes, God uh, has given us freedom since He sent Christ to die for our sins, and He paid for us. He bought us with a price. You know, the blood of Jesus. So we are free. But this freedom. How do how do young Christians exercise? Yeah, you know, like some young Christians will say, "Oh, because I'm born again now, uh, Christ has already died for me. I have accepted Him. So unlimited sin, you know, hmm. I can sin, and whenever I sin, I will just ask Him for forgiveness. It's unlimited. Yeah. So he would always forgive. Me. Wow. Yeah. So like, <laughs> how how do we um track the balance? In. Them okay. that there is a balance. As, for, mm, okay. to freedom you know okay let's start with Winnie. yes i was just thinking of this verse shall we continue mm. to sing that great song yeah. Yeah. yeah god forbid that Roman six, yeah <laughs> yes no no there's nothing like unlimited sin because you've accepted christ if you've accepted christ that means sin is going to die yeah a new creation yes it doesn't give birth to sin at all sin is rather going to die gradually so yes there's freedom in Christ. In the house of God, there's liberty. Yeah. You, have to, you are free to do things, but no, it doesn't mean that you use that freedom to sin. Then you haven't, then that person has not understood the essence of the blood of Jesus. No. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I, for me, mine is a question. What is the freedom that we are talking about? What freedom? Freedom from what? Oh, okay. Can, can I at, no, attend that question? General freedom basically in you know that because christ has died for you so now we are free okay okay what um, was, I want to what was the problem before that now we are free you know more but like we, uh so before christ speak, came I easily say god god please forgive me because mm -hmm. of the blood of jesus oh, so yeah back, you can oh, easily well, plead the blood of jesus <laughs> yes um maybe i think neng is talking I, about the freedom for you committing sin like no 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 not just oh, no, not no, only no, no, whatever you want no no, no. no. i'm not it limiting it to everything. sin yeah. it's broad freedom it's of broad. anything freedom okay. to go to wherever church you want freedom to worship him when you want to pray when you First want he's not going can to I, can i say something who's done to answer can i say something let jonathan just say something oh, okay okay oh, jonathan okay. say so i will i will i will start from where winnie stated that um shall we continue to sin that grace may abound so paul was very clear that in actual sense the fact that we are saved and the, of course the bible says that the blood of jesus has 
cleanse us from all forms of unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. It's that we, that we were sinners, were made righteous. And Jesus, who was not sin, was made sinful for us to become the righteousness of God. Yes. And so the blood of Jesus is also without blemish. I mean, it's not like the olden days where they used the blood of bulls and goats and all that, where they have to do it continuously. Mm -hmm. With Jesus' blood, it takes care of everything, and that is all. And that is where the freedom comes in. Yes. Because then, it is you are cleansed forever. You are cleansed. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the Bible said if there was no uh, blood, that was um, as in if the blood was not shed, then there will be no remission of sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is where the freedom comes in. But again, Apostle Paul said that we, are, we have chances. I mean, we have opportunities to all things, but most of them are not expedient to us. Mm -hmm. And I ask a very, I, I want to explain the word freedom by asking this, that what is freedom? Freedom is the existence of law. It may sound a bit strange, but that is where freedom is. Excuse me to say, um, of let me law use this or absence of law. No, freedom is the existence of law. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay, that's I want quite to confusing. explain. So I'm, I'm explaining it. Mm -hmm. So you see the way we are all seated. I have the freedom and the liberty to talk because you are all binded by the law that when one person is on the floor, we should all keep quiet. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when we even say freedom, you, we are enjoying freedom because somebody has decided to shut up for somebody to have his way. Okay? okay. So it's just that we, we, there's a way we understand it. Maybe in the essence, if I am allowed to talk because you are all expected to keep quiet to listen to me, that doesn't mean that I should keep talking and not allow anybody to talk. Then it goes beyond that. You understand? So with people say that we are in Christ, we are free because um, in the olden days, when you sin, you are stoned to death and all that. Maybe we are in the dispensation of grace, but the grace is just to help us so that we overcome the weaknesses. It is not to make us to sin and continue to sin. Mm -hmm. And so we are enjoying the freedom because they are lost. If Jesus Christ had not died, the, the laws of God, then wouldn't have been free in the first place. You yes. understand? So so like the Bible said he came to fulfill the law. Free from yes. sin and free. the, the free things from sin. that um, okay. so sin brings. We, so you realize that you are enjoying your freedom because somebody is obeying a law. Do, 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 do you understand it? Yes. Jesus Christ was made to die on the cross so that he will set us free from this, the sin and then the guilt all that. If Jesus so, had not obeyed that law, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have been free in the first place. So basically, you're talking, you're saying that for freedom to uh, be existent, yeah. it means someone has to pay a price. One, and it also means that there should be an existence of law. Freedom doesn't mean you have no laws. Mm -hmm. you, you, you understand? If, let's say, the curfew is off, and then we are all asked to maybe in Turkey, we are all asked to come out and then go to our workplaces and all that. We are able to move freely because there is a law that don't stop anybody from going to work because we have been given that opportunity to do so. Okay, so that, 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 that is where I'm coming from. It may sound a bit confusing. I think you're giving us bones to chew. <laughs> oh, honestly. <laughs> go and ruminate. Yeah, it's, it's quite confusing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, let me let me just let me just calm down a bit. Let me when just calm when down. we have no. too much knowledge, it's like this. <laughs> Francis so keeps thinking. <laughs> okay, this is the this is the thing. So now, um, for from... me, okay, okay, okay I'm moving no from SHS to primary. Okay, okay, so this no is the thing. We are enjoying the freedom, what we call freedom. If I am able to step out and do something freely, it is because somebody has been given the law not to stop me. Other than that, I will not have that freedom. Okay, so what we call freedom is actually laws that are put together that gives us that opportunity to live free. It's just like we are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. There are laws 
Nengi, the reason why you even believe in yourself, that your sins have been forgiven, and that Christ has died, is just because Christ has obeyed the law of dying on the cross. You, you get it? No, that is, I still, I, I still I, don't I, get I, it. I, think I, I get you in a way. I get you in I a way. St- I still Christ don't get it. The law, he fulfilled it so that we can be free. Yes. It wasn't. Really? It wasn't a law. It was his choice. The Bible said he yeah. down his life. I actually said I came to fulfill the law. I came to fulfill the law. But what? that, that the law is different. Law law is different. Is that law is different. Law. Like when yes. okay. I feel it's in a different context. Uh, context. Yeah. Yeah. context. Okay. Okay. Law. But you see, I'm worried that we are diverting from the real question and exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This, that is the part where I'm, I'm a bit worried about exactly. So this, is, exactly. this is a whole um, um, a quote, and then it's like you are going about trying to explain it for a while. Yeah. For me, the freedom part is where I'm confusing. I'm confused yeah, that, because yeah. we are just saying freedom, and then I just want people who are listening to us to get it clear. That's why I'm asking this question over and over and okay. over. When you say you come to Christ, you have freedom. What are the freedom that you are talking about? What was I doing that now I'm free from? Free from sin. From how? How am I free from sin? What is the what was there before that I'm enjoying the freedom? I think you have to make that freedom mm-hmm. clear for people to know okay. the kind of freedom you get when you come to Jesus and yeah. the boundaries at which okay. we have. Okay. Otherwise, when you say freedom in Christ, it's a big complicated thing. Does it mean that you are free oh. to go and take what belongs mm-hmm. to someone because you're a Christian yeah. now? You can just go and take okay. some what belongs or free from bondage, which is before because we're not a Christian, then there were evil spirits may be haunting you and stuff like that but now you found christ and then you are free from those things or freedom from you didn't have knowledge in the way to organize your life now you got christ now you have that freedom and then nobody is restricting you i think you have to because freedom in here is it is broad i still stick to my earlier answer guys which was that uh the freedom in christ is still about sin the consequences of sin is death. And before we were born again, we were sinners. Mm-hmm. And which means we functioned in the consequences of sin, the plague, the torment, everything, all the challenges that come with sin was there, present in our lives. Mm-hmm. So now that you have become born again, Christ died for you. Even yet, as you were sinners, he died. So now mm-hmm. that you have accepted his blood and his death and his resurrection and everything, and you have accepted him into your spirit, all those things that came with sin, all the, those consequences mm-hmm. of sin have been wiped away. You are new. Now you are free to exist with knowing that, okay, now I can grow. Now I can love. Now I can do, you know, um, how do I put it? I can, I can read I can and understand walk in the love of God. knowledge. Exactly. Okay. Knowledge has come to you. Now peace will come to you. That's if it was the evil spirits that you're talking about mm-hmm. that were plaguing the person, now it's gone because the Holy Spirit has come in to dwell in you. Mm-hmm. So that is the freedom mm-hmm. I am talking about. Okay. Yes. Can and I, this I, is I, what I wanted to say. I was just waiting for Jonathan to finish <laughs> and then and I the came into that. It's is, a whole sermon. I'll preach to you. you beg me. Yes. I think she has now come clear. Yeah, so the question yeah. now is... And, and what I wanted to say was that, you see, like from what Nengi was saying, freedom, when you sin, there's this guilt that you have, that I have sinned. Maybe somebody like Paul, I'm using Saul to Paul as an example. Mm-hmm. Saul had killed many Christians and persecuted a lot of them. Now, coming into Christ, he will have the whole weight of guilt that he has killed somebody. And for which reason he had, let's say, innocent blood on his hands. Okay. But the freedom here is when the death on the cross had separated him from that um, guilt. So once the Bible said anyone in Christ Jesus is a new creature, all things are past and everything has become new. So if somebody did something in the world, as in in the past, and now accepted Jesus, by the death of the cross, he is now free from that guilt. Mm-hmm. That is one freedom. Okay. Yes. Okay, Francis, you wanted to ask a question. Uh-huh. So it's like now we have we've clarified the freedom, but my question was now I've forgotten the real question again. <laughs> so you get <laughs> freedom. I mean, <laughs> yes. So now that I understand the freedom, but I've forgotten the question about freedom. Yeah, and so she like, answered it already. No, she was saying that what um, in terms of the freedom. 
I think he wanted to know where we can strike the balance because we are free from guilt. We are free from, like she said, because mm -hmm. of the confidence of the Holy Spirit and the power of it, we are free from demons and all those things. Mm -hmm. At which point do we strike that balance? Where we I know think, that. Okay. I think Nengi was saying, when you have freedom, what does it mean? Like, what do you do when you have freedom? Wasn't that the question, Nengi? No. Okay. The question was. <laughs> okay, just one second. The question you know, before was. Before I mentioned, Nengi was like unlimited sin, like right? because you are born again. You are that was, I was asking that. Yeah, like okay. I said, for a young Christian, right, okay. mm -hmm. who believes mm -hmm. that we are free, we have freedom. Does it mm -hmm. mean that the person has unlimited sin? Because some, I'm saying it, you know, based on what you hear uh, people that yeah, just became yeah. Christians would say, like, oh, now I'm born again. So Christ has already died for me. So that means whenever I sin and I ask for forgiveness, he would uh, forgive me. Yes, that's what I said. Oh, but okay. say well, that does it mean that he's yeah, going no. to it's okay to keep purposely committing this okay. sin. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Like I, want to, yes. I want to ask, was the I want question to I asked no. before. I remember somebody mentioned something and you said no. You you made it a bit broad. Yes. So that is when we I asked like, you. does it mean Let's that it was okay for him to continue sinning? Unlimited amounts of sin we need, we need because he had freedom. freedom. Yes. 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 I want, yes. Yes. I want yes. to do... I, I, I think the word here would be grace instead of freedom. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because it's more about grace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. also Jesus. grace and freedom as well. It, it's still freedom grace because it's still it's freedom. Still freedom. Yeah. For, yes, first of all, grace, but it's still freedom. First of all, the moment <laughs> Jesus Christ died for us on the cross, <laughs> he overcame. He overcame sin, and he gave us yeah. the power. Power is freedom, as the Bible tells us. He said, "For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us the." Spirit of love, power, and power of a sound mind. What's mm -hmm. a sound mind? You have the freedom. Now it's like you have the power. You sound have the freedom. Sound, no. that doesn't sound, mean, mind, sound mind is not freedom. Peace, it's peace, that, it's peace. Love this. <laughs> have the peace, right? No. Uh, no. Um, Tommy, please, please, please. Tommy. I'm coming. Let me oh, learn. Please. Okay. Tell me, guys. I love okay. Tommy. <laughs> Tommy, tell us. I need to make my point. Tommy, we are we are listening. <laughs> okay. It's it's related to the question, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's related to the question about freedom, and if you can see freedom. Mm -hmm. You are oh. free. Okay. Yeah, you are free, but that doesn't mean you should uh, um, take advantage of your freedom in committing sin. Of course, when you, when you, you as a baby Christian, you use your freedom and commit a sin, whatever the sin it is. You mm -hmm. should also have that same freedom to ask God for it's forgiveness. But, but you shouldn't continue. Because when Jesus Christ died in the Bible, there was something dividing human beings between from the Holy of Holies. Why are you guys putting your hands up? Winnie, your hand is up here. Wait, that? let him finish, guys. Let him finish. <laughs> oh my so we continue, continue. Make your point. Make your point. What, what are your hands up for? When Jesus okay. Christ died, what happened? Uh, you say said this. there was something dividing... Yes, Continue. there was in the temple, okay, mm -hmm. the temple, there was a, a banner dividing between the outer part and the holies of holies. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Come through. And the moment Jesus Christ died, when he said it is finished, mm -hmm. that veil rented into two. Mm -hmm. yes. okay. that Jesus Christ has given us the freedom. So for us to get in contact with God, there is no boundary. Mm -hmm. That's the freedom. Yes. Now we have the freedom to go to God mm -hmm. at any time, anywhere, yes. any given time. Whether you commit a sin, whether you, it's in worship, but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that we should take advantage of the freedom in committing sin. Like what um, Winnie said, our sister, that she quoted the scripture that's saying, 
you shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? No, but we have the freedom. Okay, yes. so Tommy so has made this point. Yes, Tommy. Um, I, 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 Yes, that is my home. That is where I was driving towards. That is that is it. Yes, that is the no point. No one is free from sin. sin. Not like that. Yes. And will continue to sin. Like Jesus said in uh, John 8 oh, verse. Thank verse, you. Verse, truly, truly, I tell you that anyone who continues to sin is a slave to sin. Yes. yes. Not free. yes. You shall the know the truth sin. and the tr- truth shall set, set you free. free. Yeah. So anyone who is Still sinning is not free yet. And I can it's use myself free. as an example. That yes, I was a born a, I'm a born again Christian. But I was suffering from the spirit of unforgiveness. And okay. until I found out the truth that I really need to let go of things and I intentionally let okay. go of like something, that was when right. I was free from the spirit yes. of unforgiveness. That today, if somebody okay. does something to mm-hmm. me, I can easily say, I forgive you. Yeah. But yes, so Feel like truth is is like is in, in is in boxes. Yeah. It's not mm. one the time yeah. that you accept mm. Christ and yeah. you are free from you grow. No, you grow the more it. we grow in it, Great. the more we yes. get to know that the more we yes. accept the more freedom we, freedom we get. Yes. Yes. yes, the more we get our, our, our fault or our, yeah. okay. our sin. Yeah, so nobody can be free and still sin. It's, yes, it's impossible. that is the whole point and, that I was driving at. Yes. What is the freedom you're talking Great. about here? Because I don't know where there's a freedom of sin mm-hmm. in the Bible anywhere. I didn't say there, there was a freedom of sin. No, 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 no. You have not said that. From that. The perspective no, no. of a young No, no, we have not said that. But you see, no, no, I'm not from that. the submissions so far, I side with what um, Dia is saying, that it will be good we use grace instead of freedom. Yes. Because you see, um, what is actually making us free is because an opportunity of grace is there for us. You, you, you understand? Mm-hmm. Huh? And uh, for the purpose of those who are listening, and especially people who are young in the faith, when they hear the word freedom, it brings a lot of things to mind. Yes. Okay, because then, of course, it, it makes it look like, okay, then, if Jesus Christ has saved you, died on the cross and saved you from the guilt of sin and all that, then you are free. Then, of course, why did you have to? But we all know that the relationship with Jesus is based on instructions and obeying the instructions. Yes. It's, 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 you are not free from it. Yes. It's even so tougher. it is the grace that makes it available yes. for us, that in the pursuit of um, holiness or oh, righteousness, or godliness, mm-hmm. sometimes we stumble and we fall. Yeah. Then the grace. that grace becomes applicable yes. to us. We can ask for forgiveness of sin, and then we can continue. It doesn't mean that we have to go and start all over. Mm-hmm. You, you, you understand? Yes. And so right. I agree with the word grace more than when freedom is used, mm-hmm. because it puts the mindset into into thinking yeah you see uh. okay who who has something to add to that yes i think he said everything i wanted to say <laughs> <laughs> well okay. done really sweetie yeah yeah you are not free yet you are not free yet <laughs> yes becoming a born again is even more challenging because when more challenging. Say, it's more challenging yeah. it's not freedom at all because when you are not yes. a believer there's some things you could do with no guilt, with no conscience, yeah. you can do whatever you want. But the moment you you, you become a Christian, now you you that you are forced to stop those things, and it's not freedom. It's but the Bible said He set us free. No, that's what I'm saying. That free from what? That's why my question was from when bondage, it? free from sin, yes. free yes. from you know things that are weighing you down. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That don't limit it to the sin because th- that's what I'm saying. That free from maybe. Like I made an example, like maybe you are a yeah. business person because you don't have the knowledge of Christ. Your business is collapsing. Now you become born again and you have the knowledge of Christ. Now you are free from collapsing business. Maybe you are having a bad marriage. Then you are bonded. Yeah. Like there's a bondage because you didn't know the, the, the wisdom of Christ. So then you had some, that bad marriage. But the moment you have that knowledge of Christ, then you are free from that because that knowledge is yeah. setting you free. 
And also, yeah. what Tommy said before, um, you need to go to a pastor before you meet God. Now, Jesus Christ has died for us. You have the right access to him. That is the freedom here. But sin yeah. has nothing to do with that freedom. Yeah. No. It does. It does. Mm. It does. It has. He, he's forgiving you, but doesn't give you the right to sin. I did not say it gives you the right to sin. I said when Christ died for us, mm-hmm. even as we were yet sinners, the consequences of sin is death, which yes. as human beings, we suffer from ah. related oh, okay. from sin, okay. things that okay. were generated from sin. We, we understand it's you now. Poverty, yes. um, yes. strive, those things are the consequences yeah. of sin. So it all great, boils great. down to sin because if Adam did not um, and Eve did not fall in the first place, everything would happen. There wouldn't be no consequences. There would not, yeah. No one would die. No one would be sick. Yeah. No I one would now. have to go through anything great, unfortunate. Great. But when Christ died for us, he mm. gave us the power, the freedom to trample over all those circumstances of sin. Yes! That's my point is, <laughs> not great. that and yes, yes, sinning. yes. No, it's clear. Power, it's clear. We have taken the power over it's sin. Clear. Where that's where the grace now comes in because so now ten, we have ten. power over the sin. So when sure. we fall, we have the grace to ask to God for forgiveness. Back. Okay, now I understand. Yeah. Do you get my point? Okay. Yes. 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 Finally. Now <laughs> Francis is free. He's I'm free. I'm free. Before I was in bondage. <laughs> yes, we are free. <laughs> so let no one say that we are not free. We're free from bondage. We're free from, but like. Yes. It's uh, should I say it's not an unlimited um, um, book where you can just commit sin because you say that you are free. Do you get okay. my point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. where that question I was saying that if and, a and, young Christian is asking, just because Christ has set us free from um, sin and free from death and everything that comes with sin, it doesn't mean that we should now okay on on purpose go and be committing the sin. No, yeah, we're still not free because for the wages of sin is death. Yeah, and you're still yeah. gonna die if you sin, and that death mm-hmm. is not that physical death anymore. Mm-hmm. It's that yeah. the, the, mm-hmm. uh, spiritual yeah, death. Judgment. Spiritual death. Yeah. Yeah. The death they are yeah. talking about is spiritual death, yeah. not the physical. So, mm-hmm. We are still not totally free. We have a different form of judgment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, yes. And, and, but and I still I want think to. the fact that as a born again Christian, <laughs> Christ has made us. He has set us free from sin. He has set us free from everything that comes from sin that's what i said and i just want to add something later that um when it comes to this uh freedom that we are talking about the Mm -hmm. for the purpose of everyone who is watching and especially the ones that are new in the faith one thing i always say is that if we do not have the capability to do what is right by the grace that christ has given Mm -hmm. us then Christ will be unjust to judge us mm, at the yeah. end of the day. You understand? Mm-hmm. And so the, the, the reason why I also understand with Bia that coming into Christ becomes also a more challenging, challenging. agenda yes. is that now you have, you have been given, Christ sees it as you have been given the Honestly. opportunity and the grace to say that this is mm-hmm. sin. This is not sin. I choose the right yeah. way and I forgo the world. Mm-hmm. I, I forgo the world and I choose Christ. And so if you come into Christ, don't also forget that that freedom that you are enjoying by maybe you can, sometimes you fall and then you ask God for forgiveness of sin. Mm-hmm. And because of that freedom, that grace that you have, Christ is able to forgive you. You shouldn't also forget that that is also an opportunity for your judgment because if you came into christ christ now sees you as somebody who has uh, the mental faculty Mm -hmm. you have what it takes you cannot take a child to the law court to be judged because the law will say that it doesn't have the mental capacity to Mm -hmm. reason so when you come into christ though you are free from all these shame and all that you should also be mindful of the things that you're doing because you are now seen as, a, as somebody who can judge between right yeah, and wrong. And, and, wrong. wrong. Mm-hmm. And, and for that matter, you are also preparing yourself for the judgment seat. Mm-hmm. So you should be careful and don't let the freedom take you somewhere. Else. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, that's all we have time for for today. Mm-hmm. 
But before we go, we would like our dear Jonathan to give us a little summary and include an altar call in his summary for all those who are willing to give their lives to Christ that are watching us this minute. Okay, Jonathan. Oh, okay. So, um, Jonathan. We, talked about, we talked about the journey that we go through when we become believers, as in when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, the Christian journey. Today we have tackled issues based on freedom from sin, guilt, and all that. And I want to talk to somebody out there that one of the things that I have come to realize that it is always better to be on Christ's side. Now, how long are you going to enjoy this world and for the purpose of the entertainment and the things that you're having? One thing we shouldn't forget is that once it's appointed unto man to die once, and mm. after that, judgment. there is judgment. judgment. Yes. yes. You can be free from all that, but you shouldn't forget it is appointed unto man to die once. Mm. The Bible says in the book of Job, it says that the man's time and his days are determined by the Lord. And when it is due, God will not even add a minute to it. Oh, yes. But there is hope for a tree when it is cut down, that at the scent of water and air, it will sprout again. That means that for our days as men, God will not add anything to it. And that is why Jesus Christ is an essential commodity in your life. We've spoken a lot and we've discussed a lot. But I want you to make a decision to come to Jesus. Because when you come to Jesus, that is where the beginning of life even starts. Yeah. God really bless you for watching and make it a point to be with Jesus. Anybody who wants to accept Jesus as his Christ and Lord and personal Savior, I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. You can even close your eyes. You can choose to just go through the statement I'm about to take you through. And say after me that today, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. And I believe that it was because of my sins that you came to die for me. Mm. Today, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Mm. Grant me grace to work with you and then to get to the end. At the end, I will not be a castaway. I will also enjoy the heaven that you have mm. prepared for me. Mm. If you have made this prayer, then... God has worked into your Amen. life. Amen. We want you to send a church around, Bible-believing church, and then Bravo. start learning and desiring the word of God and grow. Amen. 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 Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> I, I really want to do, what I want to do my, my born again again. I want to be a born again. <laughs> I want to pray, Honestly, I want to pray this because, prayer, yes. because you are free. Because you are now free. <laughs> Glory <laughs> to God. I'm so Hallelujah. excited for this episode. It was really, really lovely. It was very, you know, educative. And for all those who just gave their lives to Christ, congratulations and welcome to the family. We're excited to have you. And heaven is also excited, you know. Yeah. And for every soul, have, heaven rejoices. Exactly. Yeah. One so <laughs> and if you have imagine any how many questions, if you have anything bothering you, counseling that you would like to share, or you would want someone to guide you in discipleship or a place to fellowship and worship, just contact us. We have our social media platforms and numbers on your screen, and we will be happy to have you. Until yeah. next time, guys, stay safe, wash your hands. Bye. Spirit lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander And my faith will be made stronger In the presence of my Savior